What about this piece with all the nose on it? Uh, were you trying to kid anybody with that? No, I, maybe I was. I, it's hard to say. There it is. What are you going to say about it? Regionalism is not an idea. Regionalism is a state of mind. Writing in Art in America, art historian Barry Lord described London, Ontario as one of four major art scenes, declaring the city to be younger than Montreal, livelier than Toronto, vying with Vancouver in variety and sheer quantity of output, and in many ways, the most important of the four. London was conservative, very conservative, and, and isn't it amazing that these people broke out of that. This work, it was unusual. It was very different from what was being seen. And there were arguments, feuds. There was bad behavior, I would say. And it was a generation in the 60s, you have to understand, of, you know, flower power and the Vietnam War and peace and the pill and, you know, the rock music. It's like a revolution. For some people, it's the essence, it's the true spirit of an area, you know, the spirit of London. We think of London as conservative now. I think back then it was really conservative. It was a farming community and bank and insurance heads. What an interesting combination. Artists were trying to establish respect for themselves. It's not a given now exactly, but it's not a political issue. You know, they're, they're fighting battles that have been fought for a while, and they've made some ground and they've lost some ground. From what I've, what I've read and what I've heard from people, there actually was a small core of support there, very good support. But I think a lot of it too was pretty underground, so I think there was a great deal of freedom for them to do what they wanted to do. Art is rebellion. I think. It, it's not taking the, the uh, usual for granted. You know, this is the way you must act. I don't know if they were fighting the world, but I think they were, uh, I think they were carving a place out for themselves in the world. I think when you take the regionalism or regionalists, there was a group of people that would just happen to be here, like their wives were going to medical school at Western, or, you know, Murray comes down from Huntsville and ends up living in London. And of course, one of the big draws was Beale. Regionalism came out of one school and one man, Herb Aarons. That was Mackie Kreiderman who brought Herb and left Herb alone. And that was the essential thing. I mean, we'd go into Beale in the little staff lounge. We'd just walk in and sit down and, and have a conversation. And in fact, Herb gave me a key. It was open and it was welcoming and, and the word got around. And people wanted to come to London. Herb let this happen, and it was a very exciting time. We were getting write-ups by Time magazine, uh, all the newspapers. A lot of things were paying attention to us, and so it was an art scene going on here. The regionalists in my mind, the ones that I came in first contact with, were primarily Jack Chambers and Greg Kernow. You, you hate to sort of recognize one individual as being the catalyst for things happening, but it was, you know, you could, you could see when Jack Chambers came here and met Kernow and saw what was happening, he decided this was a, a really vibrant arts community. So Kernow was very important, but there just seemed to be a, a whole number of, of people in, in uh, London who wanted to make things happen. Greg himself um, says that regionalism started with Region Magazine. This was a small magazine that he published. So this was the beginning, as he says, region came first. If you have an artistic imagination or an aesthetic sense, you then turn to that environment and you want to make some kind of aesthetic or visual or literary sense of it, uh, whatever are the tools at your disposal. And regionalism starts there. 
you're responding to your immediate environment, but you're also comparing it to the broader world in which that environment exists. What it referred to is what we were actually doing. And what that was that you could be anywhere in the world and make top-notch art. That's what we were aiming for. Regional meant uh, doing the work that you really want to do, uh, regardless of what was happening elsewhere in the world, or uh, internationally, which was New York. Regionalism to me is not an important thing. Regionalism was useful at one time, but it's not something I ever think about. I never thought of it. Sometimes you hear people talking about the London School. Well, my thesis is that there is no London School because it was very definite that each person involved was doing his or her own thing. They weren't influenced, they were influenced to some extent by one another, but more in the ideas that people were talking about. They were following their own path. Greg was following his. Jack was following his. Tony Urquhart came and followed his. Their work was not related to each other, and yet it fed into each other. I'm in the London Public Library and Art Museum participating, I think is the correct word, in an exhibition of London sculptors called The Heart of London. This is an exhibition which is going to travel from coast to coast and is costing the National Gallery of Canada $100,000 to do it. Greg had the nerve to write the National Gallery and say, you should own, our, own my work. And, and Pierre Tiberius, who was a young curator at the time, uh, was sent to London and go see this guy. So he got on a plane, he came down to London, and he checked into the Hotel London, and then he walked along King Street and went up to Greg's third studio. He went in and Greg showed him some smaller works, and then he said to him, do you have anything larger? So they pulled this painting out, and it was called the Camouflage Piano or French Rondelles. And Pierre Tiberge reserved it on the spot for the National Gallery collection. And eventually, there were 11 artists that were in the exhibition that resulted, which was called The Heart of London. And it toured from Vancouver, or maybe I think Victoria, to Charlottetown, across the country. And it wasn't scheduled to show at the National Gallery, but there was such positive response to this exhibition that they put a show together at the National Gallery. I believe that the inclusion in the, in the exhibit which Pierre de Berge put together, the Heart of London, it, it, it puts a, a stamp, I guess, of approval. But that was 10 years of work before that happened. We had all been working 10 years before the Heart of London, so it's just sort of an outcome of the whole thing. And after that, it made it easier for us all to get our exhibitions everywhere. If it hadn't been them, who would it have been? You know, there was a spirit abroad, as it were, at that particular moment in time in the 60s. And for whatever reason, it just gelled and produced these people. It was so important for a period of time, and I think remains significant in terms of the history of art in London. This is, this is our story. This is the story of this community and the people who lived here. Why do we value these icons, if you will? because they tell our history and they speak about what we are. Um, and I'm not sure that there's anything more important. <laughs>